had already picked out my grave His plan had moved forward to put me away I drifted so far, would anyone care that I'd soon be lost? I knew my destruction was a matter of time But Jesus appeared and said, this one is mine Now I'm safe from all harm For he walked through the storm when he came looking for me Hello and welcome to Addiction Free. I'm your host, Evangelist Candy Rose. And oh boy, I am so excited because I am sitting here with Tommy Thomas. I sat in this very studio. This is his studio. We're here at Bedford, Texas. I sat here in 2006, I guess, when I was on his TV show called How to Beat the Odds. He was on Sky Angel, Dish Network, it aired all over the place. And that was before I ever had TV or anything. And here I am now. I'm back at his studio. We've, we're going to be doing a few more shows uh, from here. And uh, Tommy Thomas was a professional gambler. And his dad was a very well-known gambler back in the day, Titanic Thompson. And I'm going to have him tell you about that, have him tell you about his testimony. Because you see, the reason I bring you this every week, because I want you to see that no matter what kind of addiction or devastation you've been in, Jesus can make a transfer transformation and you will have restoration. Because also, Tommy, I'm excited about what you're doing now for the Lord, too. So would you just, uh, first of all, uh, would you tell us about this background here? Okay, this was Pastor Bill Early of the Living in the Glory, Glory Church. Okay. That was the name of his TV show. All right. And that's been up all these years. He, we aired his show and filmed it for nine years. Wow. His precious wife, Beverly, went home to be with the Lord a oh. few years back. Okay. And we've left the banner up. Yeah. And I called him Beautiful and I said, is background. it all right if we film some of Candy's shows and use your banner? He said, absolutely, Aww. Tommy. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor Bill. <laughs> yeah, and you're going to see a few more TV shows from this location with this in the background, too, coming up. So, But uh, thank you for letting me come here. I live in Hot Springs, Arkansas, and I came here for Christian Women in Media. For the, uh, I'm on the advisory board and for the Christmas party, and then Tracy Mitchell's party is tomorrow, and I'm going to that. And in between, I said, Tommy, can I get your testimony? And he lined me up, these other ladies, and you'll be able to hear their testimonies each week you're going to, there's going to be following the show so tommy start us off by telling us about your life actually i mean well let me just go back to when we had our television show it was called how to beat the odds and i interviewed people that shared their testimony yes. well you got a hold of that and realized that you don't have to have a big studio you can <laughs> do it in a home or wherever you go yeah i travel in my and life. so you got a camera yeah. and you started traveling and interviewing yes. people yes. that had addictions yes and how jesus and how god set people free yes and you've been doing it all these years yes <laughs> <laughs> well, you got a hold of something. And you know, it's so important that when God teaches us to do something, my wife, Latrice, and I, we didn't know anything about television. In 2002, we had our own television show through Sky Angel and Dish Network. They paid for all the free airtime for wow. like eight years. Wow. But we didn't know how to produce a television show. <laughs> We started, we got a couple of cameras, we had some help from some people, learned to edit a TV show and closed caption it, and did it right here in our home. Because we were willing to do that, we were able to show Candy when she came here, and we were able to pass on that where she has been ministering to people all over the country about addictions, addiction-free ministry. And God opened the doors for you to be on Uplift Television and, yes, the, and your VTN. television in Arkansas where you're yeah, on. on VTN. Two, and two you've networks, had real favor. Two networks, 41 million homes across the United States. And Thank see, you, that's, Jesus. And that's what we're all <laughs> supposed to do. When the Lord gives us a gift or uses it, we're, especially when you get older like my wife and I are, you're supposed to take younger people and teach them how and what you're doing for the Lord yeah. so they can carry on when you're not here. Yes. It's important to realize how you have to do that. God will bring people in your life, and when the Holy Spirit speaks to you and say, you need to help this person, teach this person to do what God has called them to do, that's what, when you get gray hair and you're older, the Bible talks about you're supposed to take that wisdom and yes. pass it on to a younger generation. Yes. And we were able to do that with you. Yes. 
Matter of fact, I belong to Christian Women in Media, and I hold meetings every two months at Hot Springs for ladies, and that's what we do. We share tips with each other how we do something, whether it's radio, TV, blogging, being an author, and that's what we are supposed to encourage each other and help each other. This We're in the mission field. Amen. I mean, we got, we got to tell people Jesus is the answer. We're going to come right back because I have made a commercial, 30-second little commercial, that uh, points people to a, a website that I made that uh, where they can find faith-based recovery. So we're going to come right back, and, and if you or someone you know uh, is looking for help, believe me, folks, Jesus is the answer. Uh, I'm a former stripper and a prostitute, and when I totally gave my life to Christ, that's why I'm changed, and that's why I'm the person I am today. So tell your friends about this website. So we'll be right back. Addictions. Addictions of all types are killing precious people. Overdose of opioids is on the rise. Prescription drugs and alcohol cause families to be torn apart. Everyone suffers, including the children, especially the children. If you or a loved one want help, go to addictionfaithprograms.com. There is hope. Tommy, I, I, I've interviewed him before, but what a background. Well, the, the truth of the matter is I was raised up in Indiana in a wealthy family. My dad was a famous gambler, Titanic Thompson, Poker Hall of Fame, a legend in the gambling world. But my mom and my dad got divorced when I was four years old. And I'll never forget Mom came in one morning, I'm four years old, and I couldn't find my German Shepherd. I said, Mom, where's my dog? And Mom said, well, someone poisoned your dog. Aww. I said, well, where's Dad? He said, Dad won't be coming back, son. Aww. So I lost Dad and I lost my dog Aww. when I was four years old. Aww. I grew up without a father. He never contacted me, wrote a letter, called or anything. But because he was so famous, Golf Digest, Sports Illustrated, Life Magazine, they all wrote stories about my dad. And newspapers kept writing. So I read all those stories growing up. And then Satan planted a seed, the old devil. He said, Tommy, if you become good enough at gambling, one day you'll go meet your dad and he'll love you. And that's what you've been missing all your life. Aww. When I was 14 years old, I got a pistol. I read where dad killed five different men at different times and they had to drop on him to rob him. He had a pocket full of thousand dollar bills, but he would whoop, like he fell forward. And when he fell forward, he would come up with a 45 and he killed each one of those men wow. while they had to drop on him. Wow. So, so I said, I better get, I better get good with a pistol if I'm going to go cheat people gambling wow. because I was going to be a card mechanic, a card cheater wow. so I could win people's money. So I practiced for hours every day, quick drawing, doing all that stuff. Wow. Then I got decks of cards and books on magic. I started reading about how to do things with a deck of cards. Next thing you know, I'm getting ready to go meet Dad. I'm already winning some money out of poker games and men's clubs like Elks clubs. I could go in and deal off the bottom of the deck and win three or $400, which was a lot of money back in those days. Now I'm ready to go meet Dad, and I'm going to say, I'm your son. And I just knew he was going to be proud of me. And I live with my dad. Well, I'm 18 years old. I had a girlfriend for the last couple of years. Told her I wasn't going to get married. I was going to be a professional gambler like Dad. I'm getting ready to go to Texas where Dad lived. My girlfriend got pregnant. Well, I, I didn't really know how to handle that because I wasn't going to get married. And she knew that. And so I told her, I said, look, I'm going to Texas to meet Dad like I told you I was going to do. So I'm getting ready to go, and I heard somebody knock on my door. It was my best friend growing up. His name was Mike Fritchley. Mike knocked on the door. I opened the door. He said, Tommy, I'm here to ask you a question. Do you know Jesus Christ? Well, let me tell you, I didn't want to hear about Jesus Christ. I carried a pistol everywhere I went. I was going to be a notorious gambler. There was no room for Jesus in my life. But because he was my best friend, God knew who to send to my door. <laughs> and I listened to my best friend. He invited me to a little Baptist church Sunday morning. I walked in that church. I had wraparound sunglasses on. I thought I was pretty cool in those days. Yeah. <laughs> I left the pistol in the car. Okay. 
walked in and sat down in the back of the church. After the service, they did an altar call. Now, from the time I walked into the church, I, I left my sunglasses on because the tears kind of kept coming down. And I didn't understand that. Yeah. That was uh, all new to me. Holy I Spirit. didn't cry. Yeah, I didn't yeah. cry. It was the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And the Holy Spirit draws every one of us into the kingdom of God. He'll put a tug on our heart and yes. we'll want to go forward and receive Jesus. Yes. Well, that's what happened to me because I didn't walk down the aisle. I ran down the aisle. I ran down there. I held my hands up. They give me a sinner's prayer and I didn't even know what it was all about. But I said, yes, yes, yes. I want that. I want that. Yeah. After that, I came back that night and they baptized me. And they said, now you're going to heaven. Well, I didn't know what the word of God said. I didn't know anything about the Bible. I said, well, that sounds pretty good for me. I think I'll go to Texas now and be a gambler and know someday I'm going to heaven. That'll work out real good for me. Oh, wow. I got my Jaguar XK150 convertible. Wow. Mom spoiled me growing up. Mm. Drove over to my girlfriend's house. She was holding our little baby, Tanya, our little girl just born. I said, June, I'm leaving now for Texas. I'm going to go be that famous gambler. And I roared out in that Jaguar. Pulled up in San Antonio, and Dad was out in the front yard hitting golf balls. He was probably one of the greatest golfers in the world. Ben Hogan, Byron Nelson, he beat them all. Mm -hmm. And people put the money up because they didn't gamble. They just wanted to bet on him. Wow. Tremendous golfer, tremendous athlete. He was 71 years old when I met him. Mm. Well, because of who Dad was, every top-notch card shark came to town to see him. They all had different tricks, and I practiced eight, ten hours a day with mirrors set up around the table, switching cards, switching decks. Wow. Became a master at all of that, and for the next 32 years, cheated people out of millions and mm. millions mm. of dollars. Mm. Had anything I could want. Had all the money, the sports cars, the women, didn't matter. And I got into drugs, part in with drugs, same as a lot of people we know, and the cocaine and all that. And, but then I'm 50 years old. And you know, when you do all that and you have all that and everything, there was an emptiness because God called me yes. and I ran away from the call of God on my life. That's right. How do I know he called me? Because when I moved to San Antonio, I married the most beautiful girl two years later you'd ever seen. I fell in love. I went to play poker in Pittsburgh. She said, what do you mean you're going to play poker? She knew I was a gambler, but she didn't know I'd actually leave town for a week and go play poker. Yeah. I won't be here when you get back. She wasn't. I was broken hearted. I'm going to tell you, the pastor that married us was a friend of mine. He had a Lutheran church down in San Antonio. I'm heartbroken. I'm in a motel, one o'clock in the morning, all alone. And I heard a voice, the Holy Ghost. <laughs> the Holy Ghost said, I want you to go to that Lutheran church. I said, well, wait a minute. They, they locked those Lutheran churches and somebody would think I was breaking in there or something at <laughs> one o'clock in the morning. I yeah. can't do that. Yeah. The Holy Ghost said over and over. I got in a Jaguar. I drive to the Lutheran church. The little door was unlocked. You know, you think they may lock a church, but when God says go to the church, the door will be open if he tells you to go yeah, there. Yeah. <laughs> I walked in, turned the light on, took the Bible, put it up on the podium, never opened the Bible before, opened it to the book of John, began to read the book of John. In the yeah. beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. <laughs> God wanted me to know his son, Jesus Christ. After two hours of reading that Bible, I walked out. Same night, one o'clock in the morning, same thing happened the next night. Holy, I drive to the church again. Wow. Read more from the church. Wow. Baptized in the Jordan River. Look, behold, of God, <laughs> the, behold the, the Lamb of God who yeah. takes away the sin of the world. Yeah. He wanted me to know his yes. son. Third night, yes. back at the little Lutheran church, oh. one o'clock in the morning. That sounds crazy, but <laughs> I was back in that Lutheran church <laughs> reading from that book of John. And then finally, when I got through, after a couple hours, I'll never forget what I told God. I said, God, you know I don't like school. I'm not going to school to be in the ministry. I'm going to follow my earthly dad. I want to be a gambler like him. I'm not doing what you want me to do, God. Wow. And I walked out of there. Mm. I'm 50 years old. Mm. The emptiness, because oh, all the stuff can't fill it. Oh, all no. the cars, boats, oh, motorcycles, no. had four Harleys, three Harleys, had everything. You can oh, more, 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 mm. more, 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 more. Mm. Empty, 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 That's empty. Right. No 50 peace. years old, got up after partying four or five days, walked in the bathroom, looked in the mirror, and you know, all of a sudden I saw the real Tommy. I saw the one God sees. And the one I saw was somebody that had been taking all his life, and all of a sudden I wanted to give something back. 
I said, God, I've been taken from people my whole life. I want to give something back, God. I don't want to be remembered for being one of the best card cheaters in the world. Oh, yes. Fell down on the floor and wept before the Lord. Got up, dusted myself off, forgot all about it. Two weeks later in a barber shop, my barber ran back to the shop in the back where I was. She was cutting a lady's hair in a wheelchair. She said, Tommy, that lady told me some things about you. He said, that man's a professional gambler, got a lot of money, big heart, not all that happy, and God's got him on a long leash. <laughs> I went up and looked at that lady. said, it doesn't get any better than being on a long leash, does it, lady? She didn't crack a smile. Oh. She became my spiritual mother. But two, <laughs> <laughs> two weeks later, wow. I got another message. Yeah. God's got you on a short leash. Ooh. The devil's made a bet on your soul, and Ooh. God has covered the bet. Oh. I went to a Baptist church. Oh. Easter Sunday, 25 years ago, walked in there. <laughs> Everybody was gathered around that little lady in the wheelchair. She was somebody. I oh. didn't know who she was. Wow. Walked outside, went to lunch with her. So what are you trying to tell me, lady? In the spirit, she knew. Oh. She said, God called you when you were a young man to preach the gospel. Oh. And everything in your life has led up to that end. Oh. And it's like you took a picture of hot oil. Oh. And I felt it go down. Oh. I saw Jesus on the cross. Oh. I knew he died for me. Oh. All of a sudden, the one thing I never had in my life was a purpose. Yes. And the God of the universe had a purpose for Tommy Thomas, Woo. an old gambler, to go out as an evangelist and share the good news, <laughs> the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I drew a line in the sand. The gambling stopped. Wasn't <laughs> long. The Holy Ghost delivered me from sex and Woo. girlfriends and all of that. Became went to Bible school at Calvary Cathedral International. Wow. Prayed in the prayer tower and learned how to pray for 11 years. Wow. God put me right where he wanted me. Yes. For a guy that didn't want to go to school <laughs> and didn't want to study or learn about it. Yeah, I went yeah. to Bible school, got ordained a couple Ooh. years later. And my whole life I've been studying, learning, <laughs> and following Jesus. And more and more and more when we do that. The more we know how much God loves us, wow. and the more we know how much we love Jesus because we're willing to do anything oh, for him. Oh, yes. And talk about willing to do anything. Tommy and his wife, L Latrice, now been, uh, how long now you've been going into prisons? We've been going into prison 18 years. We've been married 16 years. We wow. went in as best friends, oh. and we go. she's a chaplain in the jails, and we oh. go preach in the prisons and give Bible studies to all the inmates in the Ooh, jails. Oh, <laughs> yes. And you're going to hear one of the shows coming up of how L Latrice ministered to this one lady, and now they go back in. What and she works for the ministry and helping yes. us give the Bible studies away. Yes. And she said, when Latrice walked in that dark place in that jail, the whole place lit up. <laughs> and you said, Latrice, come up here on the set. Yeah, and Latrice yeah. came up, which you'll never get her to do that. Yeah, so and she's sitting right that. here on the set while you're talking to the girl. Yeah, and you're going to see that show uh, coming up here real soon. Uh, not, of course, uh, not, I don't know if it's next week, but the week after probably. But I want to talk to you right now of a couple of very important things that he brought up. Uh, one of them was that uh, he was running from the call of God on his life. And, you know, I, I know that the Lord, before this show even ever came on, that God has been speaking to your heart about you surrendering to him and then him using your life wonderful relationship with the one who loves you and died for you. So, Tommy, we have a few minutes left, so I, I want you to just agree with me, okay, that, that the people w that are watching, that, you know, many of you are hurting, and, and we want to give you that opportunity to let Jesus be your best friend, the love of your life. You know, a lot of you are end up doing, uh, you know, he, like he said, he grew up without a father. Many of you have been without a father. My own father molested me when I was growing up, and I ended up turning out to be a stripper and a prostitute and had addictions. And so the thing is, is I bring you the show every week to show you that Jesus is the answer. Amen. And these testimonies, they're here to bring you hope that you too can have that new life. You can have joy, peace, and purpose. Yes. Isn't it awesome now, Tommy, to lift up Jesus? Going back into the prison and, and showing the people that, 
that whatever whatever the heartache that they've went through, that Jesus wants to save them and have that relationship with them. And not only that, when you make a commitment to God and turn your life around, there are people that God has positioned for you to minister to, yes. family members, loved yes. ones, people that might never know Jesus, and God will use you to share the, share the good news of the gospel, and they'll get born again, yes. all because you committed yourself to them. Yes, yes, and if you've ever went back on the Lord, I did a long time ago for Two miserable years I was backslid, ended up living with a man. Oh, was I miserable. But you know what? I got 30 years now living from my whole heart. And I know that being backslid is a miserable place to be. So if you would like to dedicate your life to the Lord, either for the first time or a rededication, Tommy, can I take your hand? And yes. we're going to agree in prayer. Just say this after us. Say, Jesus. Jesus. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. I want to live for you. I want to live for you. With my whole heart. With my whole heart. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. For loving me. For loving me. I love you too, Jesus. I love you too. And I'm willing. And I'm willing. To leave my old life behind. And to leave my old life behind. And live for you. And live for you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, folks... God wants to use your life. Go to church, read your Bible, and talk to the one who loves you and died for you. It's all about a relationship with Jesus. You're precious to him. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I know my thoughts for you are good and not evil to give you a good future. And look at the first future. He's given you a beautiful wife that loves you, and you are partners together in a ministry for Jesus. Amen. So God bless you, and we'll see you next time. Amen. Hi, I'm Tommy Thomas. I'd like to invite you to our website, howtobeattheodds.com. My book is on the website. You can read it there. It's absolutely free for anyone in prison or jails. We just need their CID number and their address and their name, and we'll get it in the mail to them. So let us hear from you. You can email me at tommy at howtobeattheodds.com. Once again, go to the website, the book, picture of my wife on the back, a Harley. You enjoy the book because it's a book of hope. Addiction Free Ministry presents powerful resources written by its CEO, Candy Rose. Her autobiography, Spirits of Seduction, proves Christ can transform any lifestyle from X-rated to G-rated. Candy Rose believes testimonies build faith, encouraging others they too can have that new life in Christ. Go to Amazon.com or their website, AddictionFreeMinistry.com, to receive these life-changing resources for yourself or a loved one. There is help. There is hope. The addiction epidemic is destroying lives worldwide, but there is a solution. There is hope for you or a loved one. Evangelist Candy Rose travels nationwide with her camera equipment, filming in churches and recovery homes. She interviews those who testify of the former devastation, but restoration from a commitment to Christ. Candy Rose is a former stripper and prostitute who once owned a strip business and knows firsthand that Jesus is the answer. Here are ways you can experience hope by watching her weekly television show, Addiction Free, that broadcasts on TV networks to millions, by listening to testimonies on her podcast, Addiction Free, by reading testimonies including hers and all the five books she's authored, by hearing her personal testimony as she preaches the Word of God in churches and events. To find these resources of hope, go to www.addictionfreetv.com. Greetings in Jesus' name. Teen Challenge Women's Ministries has now changed its name to Adult and Teen Challenge of the Greater South. Why? Well, first of all, we're no longer just women. We have a men's center in Russellville, Arkansas. And of the Greater South, we've opened our fifth state. We are a faith-based recovery program. But first, it starts with a conversation. You reaching out. The only requirement to get in, absolute requirement to get in, is a desire to change. Hello, I'm Gary Jennings, founder of the Ark of Praise Church and the Father's House. Uh, the Father's House program is a residential home for men and women struggling with life controlling problems. We call our program a Christian discipleship program. We're very uh, much about Jesus Christ and we feel like he is the solution to helping people heal their hearts and changing their lives and restoring families. Hi friends, this is Candy Rose, TV host of Addiction Free. 
My church, the Ark of Praise, and I would like to introduce our pastor, Gary Jennings. Him and his wife, Danette, are the founders of a recovery home, the Father's House. And we'd like to present his CD, You Chose to Be My Friend. And his friend, Gerald Crabb, produced the CD using his songs. And all proceeds will go to the Father's House. To receive your copy, go to thearkofpraise.org. I'm Richie and Carly Willis, and we just want to tell you we both were in major addictions in Hot Springs, Arkansas. We both come out of major, major drugs and major, major addictions. We just want to tell you that today we have men's homes in Hot Springs called Solomon's Porch. There's three homes for men. Uh, we have our own church today, 411 Highland Street, called Highland Street Revival. We have a roofing company today called Willis & Son Roofing. We have crews working for us and people in the office, and we're just thankful. This is Pastor Tim and my lovely wife, Leslie. Uh, we pastor New Life Church, but we also run Project New Start Recovery Homes. Uh, these are homes designed to help men and women overcome addiction, bondages, we deal with any type of bondage that there is. We've been doing this for 20 years. God has just uh, literally changed lives through faith in Jesus Christ. Give us a call at 870-523-8413. God bless. I'm Lisa Haynes, Clinical Director for Shalom Recovery Centers. Shalom Recovery Centers is a nine-month Christ-centered program we provide services for both men and women, and we seek to serve those looking for help with life-controlling issues and addiction. The Harbor Home is really a house of miracles. It is located in a small church in central Arkansas, in Conway, Arkansas, and it's a faith-based program anywhere from six months to one year, uh, residential for women coming out of drug and alcohol addiction. We have women of all ages that come to the Harbor Home and from all over the United States. And it really is a place where people can come, get down to the real root cause of the issue. Our first six months is a time of healing, a time of reflection, and really an opportunity for you to come to realize your value and your worth. And uh, really to develop and cultivate a real relationship with Jesus Christ, which we believe is the answer for all addictive behaviors. I need to hear somebody testify I need to hear somebody say That you were lost and at the bottom And you could not find your way Just when life had lost all meaning And you wish that you could die Jesus came to you that day, you invited him to stay, I need to hear somebody testify, if you confess with your mouth that he is Lord, and believe with all your heart that he was raised, God made a promise, and you can take him at his word, you'll be saved. You'll be seen.